Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week, what we're going to do is we're talking about the SA-35 again, because no one's sick of it yet. We're going to get into the insides, the innards of this gun, and see what it's made of. Um, I'm not even sure I have to do this, because I'm such a small channel, but they're right off the bat. Springfield still doesn't know who I am. Um, there's no kind of relationship or anything there. Um, I'm still in the Bureau of Propaganda with Brownells. Uh, they don't give me anything. No, no, they're not spon- they don't sponsor me, anything like that. And, uh, last is, um, BH Spring Solutions. Um, there's no relationship there, but I have, uh, used their tools, uh, their parts, and uh, their knowledge for this video. Um, so, jumping right into it, um, what I did was I took this guy apart to nothing except for the trigger assembly. I did not take that out because it, it's not uncommon at all for high powers to have extremely tight trigger pins right here. But mine, holy cow, this thing is snug. I, I beat on it with the might of the gods, and it didn't move. So I'm going to worry about that another time. For this video, we're not terribly concerned with it. Um, so right off the bat with taking it apart. If you are a high power person and you have specialty tools from BH Spring Solutions, I'm going to tell you right now that their third hand tool for uh, holding the hammer back while you remove the sear pin will not work on the SA-35. Um, the Springfield's reprofile of the hammer here is too thick. It's down with the thickness, and the the third hand tool can't quite get a good grab on it. So, um, I'm sure that that has been uh, noticed by Mark Allen and the folks at BH Spring Solutions. Um, I would be very surprised if they weren't working on a solution for it, but I don't know. For, for certain, so I can't say anything as far as that goes. So, um, there's that. Next, um, if you've never disassembled a high power beyond field stripping, just know that the sear spring, you're going to want to keep an, a hand on it, because when I took mine apart without the third hand tool, so had to prioritize where hands were going, um, my spring launched, or my, my sear launched via the spring. Uh, it took me a couple of minutes to find it, but, um, just know that that's a thing that will happen. Um, last, for the uber detailed among you, um, I have a, uh, Brownells 1911 Magnetip bit set. Um, and the, the grip screw bit that comes with it, number 240-5, will not fit the SA-35 grip screws. Now, uh, yeah, it's for a 1911, obvious. Um, I just, I figured I'd give it a try, and, uh, it, you know, for, again, for the, the super duper detailed among you, that bit won't fit. <laughs> Alright. So. So there's that. We, we talked about the trigger pin. We talked about the, the third hand tool. The bits and bobs. So. What we are wondering today. Is what is in this gun. Um, when the... Shortly after they were announced, I forget exactly how long after, but um, 
Jason Burton of Heirloom Precision put up a couple of posts on Instagram saying that there was no MIM parts in the gun. Now, for those who don't know, MIM is metal injection molding. And what this is, is powdered metal mixed with generally a polymer-based binder. It's all melted down into a goo, and it's as the name implies, injected into a mold. Um, MIM is very common, and it is a very cost-effective way for manufacturers to produce complex parts. Parts with a lot of different edges and angles and things. Um, the issue with it is sometimes you... Oh, one of the big issues is hard surface hardness. Um, sometimes it's way too hard um, on the surface. Other times there's n no part of it has been hardened at all. Um, another issue is uh, density. Because of the very nature of this, of how this is made, it's, it's not as dense as it might need to be. Um... MIM is, once it's molded, it's oversized, and it goes through a debinding process, which removes that polymer from it and reduces it into the size and dimensions that you want, ideally. Um, the, the thing about MIM is it's like casting, in that there is some that's really good, um... Or at least, you know, it works. It does what it's supposed to. And there's some that's really, really bad. In either case, um, generally speaking, there's obviously exceptions to every rule. Um, generally speaking, a forged part is going to be better. Uh, it's going to be inherently stronger, and so on. Um, the, the biggest thing you'll hear about MIM is how they don't last as long. You'll get premature wear, breakages, things like that. Um, and Springfield, is it's all of their production 1911s from the, from the Defender series up through the TRPs. Every single one is full of MIM parts. I had a list around here somewhere, I couldn't find it, of all the MIM parts in my daily carry gun, which is a Springfield Marine Corps operator. And it almost all of the small parts are MIM. I have not had any problems with this gun. Um, okay, I've had four failure to ejects in three years, and all four of them were my fault. They weren't the mag or... You know, it, it was operator error. So, MIM is okay. Well, we all want better parts, but you'll live with MIM. Um, so, does this have any MIM parts in it? No, it does not. Um... About now, I should be rolling some pictures uh, in here that will show you um, close-ups of most of the uh, internal parts. I'm confident in saying that the trigger and uh, the other parts of the trigger assembly are not MIM because, as, as a general rule, either all of it's MIM or none of it's MIM. But... You've, you've got the the sear, the hammer, all the little bits in there. They have none of the evidence that indicate MIM. Um, they all actually have uh, tool markings from the machining process. So these are, these are forged machine parts in here. Um, the 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 best i can figure because like like casting or like uh, stamping mim is 
extremely expensive to tool up for. You have to have the molds made and just everything. So, as far as I can figure, you know, 1911s, you'll see a lot of MIM because those are so... They're produced in such volume. Whereas things like the SA-35, you know, high powers, there is not a huge market for these anymore. You know, it was, it was FN and, and the cloners... Um, back that back in the day, and now Springfield's the only one domestically making them. So, to keep the cost low, they actually went with the more part for part the more expensive means of of producing the the guts. So, but you get an overall better quality pistol from it, which is, that's good to go. Um, some other things is, um, that I just want to touch on. Um, BH Spring Solutions put out a couple of videos, their initial inspection of the SA-35, and they go into more detail they have the ability to go into more detail than i ever will so one of the first things they point out is they have a hammer down test so what they're doing is the hammer down safety test is they noticed and i had the same results as their test is there's a little bit of movement. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, with the uh, with the safety with the hammer down. Now the issue here is it can cause just enough binding on the slide to prevent it from getting locked from coming back. Now, he goes into much greater detail um, in his video that uh, the military, the way this was designed for military use, uh, the idea is condition three. So, you would carry it, magazine inserted, chamber empty, hammer down. And that's how it was carried until it was ready to go into action. Um, the the U.S. military did the same thing with the 1911. That was that was the procedure for carrying a 1911 on duty. In for concealed carry, we typically go with the good old cocked and locked method. So, if you're carrying cocked and locked, condition one. This, this, um, it's, it's a non-issue with, um, uh, the hammer down safety test. But if you were to carry condition three, just know that there's just enough play in this to get your slide to stick when you need to, to rack it back. Um, the next, um, uh, the next thing he points out is um that i noted anyway is the slide stop um mark allen over at bh spring solutions said uh his his sa35 the slide stop was very sharp and very heavy to uh to engage to i can't think of to hit so you drop the slide um I don't know how many he's messed with, but, and I'm not saying that, you know, anything negative here. I'm saying on my gun, on this one, this, I'm not going to say that this feels like it's been dehorned, but I wouldn't describe it as sharp either. And it takes... 
next to nothing to drop the slide on this. It's, it's, it's pretty light. Now, no magazine in there. It's going to be a little stiffer when you have a, a mag with ammo in it, but it's still not difficult at all, in my opinion. Um, so that's just, again, this is nothing negative about what they're saying. This is just, um, it might depend on the individual gun here. His might, um, uh, might be a little different from mine. Um, the last thing I'm going to point out here is, uh, something that I just noticed the other day, actually, is the rear sight has a set screw in it. And I noticed that this set screw was walking out. I've only put about 150 rounds through this gun, and my set screw had come about halfway out. I just grabbed an Allen key, tightened it back down. I should have log tightened it. I'll wait for it to walk itself back out, and then I'll log tight it down. Um, and uh, so that's just if if you have one of these. That's just something to be aware of. Um, last, okay, I lied. This is the last bit. Um, the um, front sight cut is, according to BH Spring Solutions, identical to that on the uh, the Regent BR9 that TSOS was importing. Um, according to them. There is nothing on the market right now that fits this particular dovetail. Which is mildly annoying because it's the one thing I for sure wanted to change on this was to get rid of that white dot that you'll see there and put a gold bead or something there. Um so it's just one of those things we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see, you know. If someone makes a, a site that'll swap with this one, um, that's overall, you know what what's going on. I, that's a that's a quick and dirty. What's going on inside this gun? Um, Springfield Hammer Forged um, slide and frame, you know, forged barrel, uh, stainless steel. I'm I'm sticking with what I said before. This is an excellent quality gun, especially at its price point. Um, yes, there's machine marks inside. Um, no, I don't care. Because inside it doesn't really matter. So, in, in the future... Uh, videos are going to be uh, probably a little quicker. They're just going to be updates every so many rounds, probably every 500 rounds or so that I put through this to give everyone an idea of how it's handling, how it's wearing, and things like that. But for today, that's just uh, quick, easy, what I found inside and and that's that. I hope you liked today's video. Please uh, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to see me ramble on more. And uh, share it around. I appreciate it. You have a great day.